Okay, here we are. Uh, my name's Maurice Bernard. I almost forgot what my name was there. And uh, this is State of Mind. Today, uh, I'm not gonna, you know, like, I don't have a script, I don't have anything, I'm just gonna go off the cuff. I know I've done it before, but this this is, I, I've never done it on YouTube. So, what I wanna talk about today, oh, one more thing. If you like what you see, hit the little button that says like, so you can subscribe. Because I need as many subscribers as I can get so I can keep doing this and um, having a great time. So um, what I want to talk about today is, is music. If you know anything about me, if you, if you look at my Instagram, you know that uh, I love music. Because everywhere, you know, in my Instagram story, I play and don't think I play music on my Instagram. And don't think that I just pick a song, put it there. No, I feel it. I got to feel it. If it's a gut thing and I look at the picture, if I look at the video and I, you know, it's, it's, I have to pick the right music. But my whole life I've listened to, to music. When I was um, a boy, my mom and dad would have parties and they would be dancing and drinking and smoking and, and just having a great time. And I remember it was all Latin music, like salsa, you know, like, uh, you know, quitate tu pa ponerme yo, quitate tu pa pa -da 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 -da. It was really, really cool. And I, did, you know, I hear this music, I, I really liked it. and. Now, when I hear salsa, it reminds me of the parties my mom and dad had. And then every, every so often, they would uh, call me into the living room, and they'd call everybody in there, and I'd, I'd sing Michael Jackson songs. Like, I had a high voice, and I, I could sound just like Michael Jackson. And it was like, you know, like... Bend the two of us need to look. I can't go the other one because it's too high. <laughs> but, uh, and then as I got older, right, um, I was like listening to, when I had a, I had a low rider, okay? And it was a 1976 Monte Carlo. It's in my book, nothing general about it. 1976 Monte Carlo with T-tops, crushed velvet interior, uh, true spoke rims, tires. Uh, it was just like the coolest car. And I, I, I had it painted midnight blue. And I used to have like a, a cassette in there. That's what we used to have when we were younger. It was like a cassette player. And you have great speakers. And I used to just listen to mu music all the time, like Cruising by Smokey Robinson. Baby, let's cruise away from here. It was really great. I'd be in my car. My car would, because I cut the springs in the car. I don't know. You, you probably don't know what I'm talking about. But I cut the springs. I didn't have hydraulics. And my car would drive like that, you know. Um... So yeah, you know, music was a big, big deal for me. Um, and then let's see, as I go through the years, uh, I always liked uh, soul music. Now, what really wasn't into rock or things. I was into like Earth, Wind, and Fire, Cameo, Parliament. Just loved that, you know, Al Green, Barry White. All that stuff was fantastic. And I remember one time, I was, uh, when, they, when they put me in the mental institution, it was my first nervous breakdown. And I remember being in there and thinking, you know, this is wild, I don't know. I was, 
you know, they had me pretty much a straitjacket. But I remember uh, going into a room. You weren't supposed to go into rooms, and you really weren't supposed to lock the door when you went into rooms. But I remember going into the room and, and locking the door, and I turned on, they had a radio in there, and I turned on the radio, and it was Phil Collins. I can feel it coming in the air tonight. And man, when you're in that state of mind, like I was, and you listen to that song and the drums that come in, it just makes you feel like you wrote the song, like you sang the song. And then, of course, somebody would knock on the door, I'd open it, and you're not supposed to be here. And, and then there was another time I went in the same room, turned on the radio, and there was another Phil Collins song. I don't remember the, the, the song, but it was another cool song. And I was like, wow. Um, and then, you know, with, with, when I used to go out on dates with girls, music was a big deal for me. Like, we'd park, even my wife Paula, We'd park across the street from the homes, and I'd play, you know, uh, a romantic song, a slow song or something, and I would sing to the girls. And I, I, I couldn't sing, but it didn't matter because <laughs> I don't know. I guess I sang well enough, and uh, and that's you know I would just sing. And then in uh, the eighties, when I started modeling. Boy, I'm just going off the cuff here. This is a trip. When I started modeling, I remember the 80s weren't a great period for me because that's when I was in the mental hospital. And I remember even now when I listen to music from the 80s, it's not a good memory. It's like, uh, you know, like the 80s, like 99. Da, da, da. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, just songs like The Clash or uh, I actually liked uh, George Michael, but, uh, you know, whatever was in the 80s that was very popular, it just it wasn't a good, because I'd be, I used to, when I was modeling, and I wasn't successful as a model, I was very unsuccessful, I'd have to drive like 30 minutes to San Francisco, and I lived in Martinez so it was a long drive so after a modeling what do they call them go sees or whatever I'd have to drive home and I'd listen to these 80s songs and the, the time was just not good uh, and I remember another time with my buddies and we were all like tough guys and we went to go see Gap Band he dropped the bomb on me you dropped the bomb on me Baby, you dropped a bomb on me. And we loved the Gap Band. And we were sitting there, about seven of us, and all guys. And all of a sudden, they say, before Gap Band comes up, they say, we have somebody who's singing. And we're like, who's singing? Come on, bring Gap Band out. And they're like, his name's Luther Vandross. I'm like, Luther Vandross? What's, who's Luther Vandross? And then Luther started to sing, and we all just shut up. His voice was like... And, and later on, uh, I, was, I had dinner with Luther Vandross, and I was able to tell him that story. He goes, I remember that concert. It was in Concord, at the Concord Pavilion. And I'm like, yeah. I said, you shut us all up. It was great. Uh... But uh, Luther's just one of the best voices ever. And then when I wrote Nothing General About It, Nothing General About It, uh, we decided, Paula, Sue Black, the writer, and myself to, well, actually it was Sue who, who, who thought of this, to make each chapter into a, a, a song title, because we all know that music is so important to me. 
And so that's what we did. And just before I get into the book thing, I just want to tell one more story. When you guys know I go out to the goats, and if you don't know, that's fine, because that's what I do. I go out to the goats, and that's what gives me serenity and peace. And I go out to the goats and the alpacas, and I sit in the chair, and I'll put on, like, The Carpenters or James Taylor, Billy Joel. And I just look at these animals and, and it's like, I've said this before, but I'll say it again. When I was, when I had really bad anxiety during the pandemic, I would go out there and I couldn't feel anything. It was just not, it, I couldn't see anything. It was like, I wasn't in the moment at all. It was just, just not a good thing. I don't care if I put music on or not. It was really difficult, but man, now that I'm feeling great and I go out there and I put on uh, James Taylor or Billy Joel or whatever, I just, out of nowhere, man, it's like, tears start coming down my face. Because it's like, I can't believe how great I'm feeling. And six months ago, it was just horrible. All right, so I just want to, tell you about a few chapters in my book that about the songs you know like the third chapter of my book is is highway to hell and that's when I was in the mental institution and it, and it truly was a, a, a hell uh, you know but you know in my book, it's a great chapter because it's like exactly what I went through during that period in there. It was tied up with other people, losing 30 pounds, escaping, and it was it was tough. And that's when I that's what I said earlier when I used to listen to Phil Collins and everything and stuff like that. And there's another chapter five, which is free falling. Free falling uh, is a is a chapter on my wife, who is just a you know an angel, and has done everything for me. Like when I'm not in a, when I'm going through things, all like all I hear, all I have to hear from her is, "You're gonna be okay," and then I. I get better, and that's what that chair. That this is uh, Tom Petty singing "Free Fall," you know. Yeah, uh, I don't know the song, but whatever. Um, that's what that chapter is about. And then there's another chapter, which is, um, and I'll get to it quick here. Oh, "Man in the Mirror." Man in the Mirror is, a, is when I had my third breakdown when I started General Hospital. I would get somebody in a room when I was going through a manic episode and I would sing them Man in the Mirror at the top of my lungs. And they're like, uh, what the hell is going on? It could have been a stranger, anybody. I said, hey, sit down. I want to sing you this song. And it was Man in the Mirror. Uh, so chapter 12 is... Tears in Heaven, and Tears in Heaven has to do with, I've had many people in my life who have died, and I was not able to say bye for whatever reason, and uh, many people who I, I just loved, loved, and loved. Um, 
but you know, like I tell people about death. Death, for me, every time somebody has died, I, I, they have given me a gift. And sometimes, you know, it takes a while, but you'll something like Manny when Manny died. There was I was sitting out in the chair, and there was like three hawks just flying together, and I thought, "Oh, that's a sign." And then when Donna died, she gave me the gift of strength because. I didn't really cry that much. I mean, I cried, but I didn't cry that much. Because she was always telling me to be strong. And I am strong. You are strong. You can do it. You're strong. And she gave me that gift when she passed away. So we always have to look at the positive and the negative. And it's very important. Okay, I think I've been talking, it seems like a long time, I don't know how long it's been, but uh, thank you guys, and I love you guys, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.